So with this video we're going to take a look at the if-else. Instead of having just a one-way decision, we're going to have a two-way decision using the if-else structure. And we're also going to practice some for-loop stuff. And uh, I'm going to throw in a little bit more. Um, there's a little string function in here and then there's another way to refer to cells in here. So let's take a look at that code. So a lot of this is going to look quite similar. I'm declaring a row variable, a start row variable, an end row, um, a column variable. I need a string variable to hold a string. And I need another string variable to hold the first letter. I initialize my start row to 1 and my end row to 18 because that's the data I have on my sheet. And it's in column 1. So let's take a look at what we're going to do here. We're going to loop over the rows. So we say for row and next row. And we're going to go from start row to end row. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, up to 18. Again, the key, the key idea here is that this variable is going to have a 1 the first time around. And then it's going to execute the body of the loop. It's going to have a 2, execute the body of the loop, a 3, and so on. So the very first time around, we're going to grab the item from row 1, column 1. You'll notice the column variable stays the same throughout this piece of code because we never change it anywhere. We set it once here, and it never changes in the body of the loop. The row variable, of course, is going to change every time we go around another loop on this for next. So we grab the string out of that cell. The next thing we do is we grab the leftmost character of that string. So we put that into this first letter variable. And then this next line has something a little bit new on it, but pretty easy to understand. What we do is we use a different a new string function to convert that letter to an uppercase. So it makes sure that whatever we grabbed off of that string is converted to uppercase, and then we store it back into that same memory location. Now here's the example then of the if then else. Again, the if then else looks very similar to what we've done with the if then. You have the keyword if. You have your test. In this case, we're looking for the capital letter P. And you have the then keyword. And you follow it up with the code you want to execute if that test is true. So in other words, if this test is true, we're going to change the interior color of that cell to green. That's 255 on the green. And then we're also going to do something else. We're going to take that same cell and we're going to offset from that cell. So here's a nice, very useful little method or property of this cell. We can offset from this cell to get another cell. So don't overthink this. It just says take this cell and offset a certain distance from that cell. So the very first property is, I mean, the very first number you see here is the row offset. So we're saying we don't want to offset any row from this cell. So we're going to be on the same row. And we offset one column. Well, a positive offset goes to the right, and the negative offset goes to the left. So this basically means we're going to stay on the same row, and we're going to go to the one column to the right, and we're going to store the string yes into that cell. Now, where things get a little different is if this test is false, if this test is false, we're going to provide the else portion of the if statement to allow us to have some code that will run when the test is false. So the else portion then runs when the test is false. You can always put, <coughs> excuse me, you can always put a comment right there if you want to, and just say test is false. And that's just a comment. There's nothing else magic about it. Another way, another thing you could do is if you want to be explicit, you could say else first letter is not P. In other words, if the first letter is P, is equal to P, it'll execute these two lines of code. If it's not P, it executes these two lines. So essentially, we're doing the same thing. We change the interior color of the cell, in this case, to blue. And we're going to do the cell offset and offset that from that cell, one column to the right, same row, and put the no into that cell. And then we have our end if. So this is a pretty straightforward uh, add-on to the if statement. Nothing too fancy here. Um, I want you to take note that uh, we don't put colons. Don't, don't type a colon 
Um, and if the code's typing a colon automatically for you for some reason, you're doing something wrong. So we have four keywords here. We have if, then, else, and then the end if. You can think of that as one keyword, I guess, or five. So this code executes if the test is true. This code executes if the test is false. And then we come back down and we go around on our loop again. So let's take a look at what this code actually does when we run it. <coughs> does pretty much what you'd think, I bet. So it changed the colors. There's the P, there's the P, there's the P. Notice this lowercase P also was picked up as green and in case the as is, was the uppercase P's. And so that shows that both cases are working. We also got yeses on the greens and noes on all the blues. So I've got a little reset color thing that'll reset my colors and then I can just highlight my text and hit the delete key and set it back to the beginning. I could have done that in code but I just want to mess with it. Let's take a look at that reset just for a little general interest. We say cells, that's the entire sheet, all the cells on the whole sheet. Interior, and in this case we're taking the pattern property of the interior and setting it to XL none. And what that just says is we don't want any pattern on those interior cells, I mean on those interior areas of those cells. And so it wipes out anything. You don't get any color or anything because the pattern's gone. Now what I would like you to do, the code I want you to write, is I would like you to write code that would take the last two digits, peel off the last two digits from the contents of the cell, and then if the last two digits are greater than or equal to 50, put a yes in here. And you could color the cell also a color if you want to. And if the last two digits are less than 50, put a no in this cell. And again, you could color the cell a different color if you wish to see how that works. So you have to think of the right string function you might use to peel off those last two characters, store it into a numeric variable, and then comp your test would be to see whether it was greater than or equal to 50. And then use the if then else to put the right text Yes, if it's greater than or equal to 50. No, if it's not. And also, maybe it would be nice to color the cells. So see if you can write that code to do that. And when your code runs, you should see some values here in this column and the colors. Okay, thank you.